Hello and welcome, this is your host Luke Seferian and today I want to show you around one of the greatest villages in Italy, namely Arqua, where Petrarch found refuge from the disturbances of the Dark Ages. It was celebrated in Percy Bysshe Shelley's poem called Lines Written Among the Euganian Hills, and I quote, As the love from Petrarch's urn Yet amid yon hills doth burn A quenchless lamp by which the heart sees things unearthly So thou art mighty spirit So shall be the city that did refuge thee End of quote The original village was built on the slope of this hill in the Neolithic which was expanded and fortified over the course of several centuries with a hilltop castle, stone walls and brick buildings. The name Arqua is a contraction of the Latin term Arcum Arx, which translates to Fortress of Arches. Indeed, arches still feature prominently in Arqua's peculiar architecture. The most popular local products are jujube wine, which is sold at many village inns, and extra virgin olive oil, which is regularly consumed by villagers for salad dressing and bread dipping. Francesco Petrarch was born in Arezzo in 1304. He was able to look back over almost a thousand years to what many historians have classed as the greatest disaster ever to afflict Europe, the end of the Roman Empire, which had been an oasis of civilization for 500 years, before it was swamped by barbarian invaders during the 5th century AD. When Francesco was five, the Petrarch family relocated to southern France. At age 16, Francesco was sent back to Italy by his father, who wanted him to study law at the University of Bologna. Three years later, he dropped out. He felt academia could stifle free thinking and the spirit of inquiry. So he told himself, the path of your life is in your hands. Petrarch did a lot to foster humanism's development. He started a movement to find forgotten ancient Roman manuscripts written in Latin, found especially in monastic libraries. He made a great name for himself as a classical scholar and vernacular poet. In 1340, he was crowned as poet laureate in both Rome and Paris. A laureate was a poet who had attained celebrity status and been inducted into a sort of rock and roll hall of fame. The title laureate derives from the laurel tree, whose twigs were used to form a crown for outstanding citizens and committed artists. Petrarch loved wearing his laurels to signify his philosophic quest for truth and wisdom. He just could not bear to rest on his laurels. He stated that five enemies of peace inhabit with us. Avarice, ambition, envy, anger, and pride. If these were to be banished, we should infallibly enjoy perpetual peace. Petrarch was a prolific letter writer and counted Boccaccio among his notable friends to whom he wrote often. English poets at that time imitated foreign models, the most important of which was the sonnet, a poetic form which was originally Italian. Petrarch was Geoffrey Chaucer's contemporary and influenced his literary style but he also inspired later English poets like Thomas Wyatt, Henry Howard, and William Shakespeare. Petrarch wrote about love, chastity, death, fame, time, and eternity. He also described the ideal course of man 
toward enlightenment. He traveled extensively throughout Europe, served as an ambassador, and collected crumbling Latin manuscripts, which he enjoyed translating into the two dialects he knew, namely Florentine and Venetian. Petrarch survived the plague that peaked in Europe from 1347 to 1351, but became infected with scabies and other diseases. So he started frequenting the Euganian Hills, renowned for their medicinal plants, hot springs, and mineral spas. Thanks to their curative powers, his health was restored. In 1369, the Lord of Padua gave Petrarch a home in Arqua as a gift. Petrarch met Landini, who was by far the most famous singer and musician in 14th century Italy. Petrarch became a protector of the art of the troubadours. One of his major works was a collection of 366 lyric poems known as the Songbook. Petrarch was an animal lover too. When his cat passed away, he had it embalmed. The feline mummy is still preserved in a reliquary at his home in Arqua. Petrarch's bedroom window overlooks a valley where he loved to go hiking. As he was aging, he grew ever more introspective and noted, Men go about to wonder at the heights of the mountains and the mighty waves of the sea and the wide sweep of rivers and the circuit of the ocean and the revolution of the stars, but themselves they consider not. A few steps from the village church is a mythical natural spring that Petrarch would regularly drink from. It was also a place for socializing and engaging in intellectual pursuits. Petrarch's house had a front yard and a backyard, several rooms decorated with frescoes and statues, and a meditation room with one chair and a cabinet filled with ancient books. Petrarch was also an occultist and alchemist, as evidenced by a pentagram and various allegorical paintings in his living room, such as the picture of a sacred fire overlying a Latin phrase which means neither wind nor rain, roughly equivalent to the English come rain or shine, written in honor of Prometheus. Petrarch died in this house on July 20th, 1374, his 70th birthday. His family buried him in a sarcophagus placed in front of the village church. The last owner of Petrarch's house was Cardinal Silvestri, who donated it to the city of Padua so it could be open to the public. Please like and share my video and make sure you subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. I shall see you next time.